Hello and welcome to my channel where I do guides for photography. Today we are inside Omo Futuro 2022 and we are going to deal with this image which is a really flat and really boring <laughs> image but we are going to try and make the best out of it and I'm going to try and follow my workflow instead of an amateur workflow I'm going to use my workflow on this image and of course the first challenge is to set the contrast uh, correctly uh, right now we have the same contrast tones or we are <laughs> pretty much compressed uh, into more of the mid tones and the shadows and you can clearly see that by uh, this histogram we have nothing into the blacks and we have nothing into the highlights or whites so of course we need to fix that first this is something i would go for first i want to stretch out the histogram i don't want to start with a point where we have to do small fixes all of the time so i want to set a white point and i want to set a black point and i want to do that with curves and this is uh, my workflow, be it in Lightroom, in uh, Luminar, Capture One. Actually in Capture One I usually use levels, but it's the same thing. And so this is something that you can carry over to other products as well. So in a curve, or let's go through the histogram first. I have a video on my channel about histogram and curves. so if you want to go really into details you should probably watch that first but i'm going to do this real quickly so in the histogram here you have the blacks in the left corner and if you push this graph outside the blacks you are crushing the blacks or clipping the blacks whatever you want to call it but you are doing stuff to the blacks that you probably shouldn't do sometimes you want to do that but those cases are really rare. And on the right side, you have the highlights or the whites. And you want to ideally push uh, this part of the graph over to the whites. So you want to stretch out this histogram. And some people simply use their eyes. But I don't trust myself this way. Uh, or being that i'm in a room where the light changes all of the day i like to use the histogram to see if i'm clipping or not but if you don't want to use the histogram simply ignore it that's completely fine now down here in the corner you also have the blacks and when you move more over to here you have the shadows and when you are around here from the shadows and up to around here actually you are in the midtones above that you have the highlights and above that you have the whites and we want to set a proper black point so i'm actually going to push this over to the right side this little button and we <laughs> want a white point we want to brighten the scene so i'm pushing this over to the left side and this leaves uh, kind of a strange curve i know <laughs> but yeah that's how i like to set the white and black point i'm going to show you another way or there are more ways than only one more but yeah okay so we have contrast here now we can activate a clipping warning and you can do that either by clicking this button or you can I hit alt j on your keyboard i guess that's command j on mac i'm not entirely sure uh, this will all activate the clipping warning and you can actually simply hold down the j key and release it when you don't want to see the clipping warning anymore okay so now we have a proper black point we are into crushing the blacks but we are not clipping the whites yet so i want to move this up but i can see that yeah if i move up to where we are clipping we are in deep trouble here because you can see how bright that is 
and it's not showing clipping at all. Okay, so I don't know why that is. Yeah, now it's showing uh, buggy. Okay, so we want to back down to around here. Uh, some crushed blacks is fine, but uh, some clipped whites are not fine. You can see it with your eyes when whites are clipped. And especially if you print uh, your image, it's going to show well because it simply won't print anything there. Okay, so this is the first uh, curve with the uh, white and black point. I want to add another curve here. And I'm just going to try and lift some of the foreground with that curve. So I want to try and leave the highlights as is. So I'm going to hit a point up here where the highlight sits. And I'm going to hit a point here where the midtone sits. And around here where the shadow sits. This, when I move this point here in the midtones, I'm not going to affect the highlights. And I'm actually going to move the highlights just down there so if i don't have this point there uh, and i move the midtones i'm actually moving the highlights as well but i want to be able to control that uh, myself and i'm actually moving up the shadows as well and you want to leave some contrast you don't want to set the same toning for the shadow and the and the uh, midtones and in this case, we have the mid-tones here. We brightened that more than we brightened the shadows, but we did indeed bright the shadows as well. So now we have two curves. All right, so yeah, I'm, I think I'm happy here. Uh, I could set a curve for uh, color grading as well, and I could brighten up certain specific colors, a range of colors, and I could do tone entirely using curves. I've done that in another video. You should be able to find that up in that corner. Uh, so you can see how I do that. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. I think I'm at a good place now to start using the develop module. And I'm going to start with the shadows just a little bit. And I'm going to drop the highlights a bit there, but not too much. I still want some white in the sky and I can drop the highlights and go down to the whites there and pull that up and try and still have some whites but drop the highlights and then, yeah I think it works okay but we have already done that in a curve so we shouldn't really need to do that Sometimes when pulling up the shadows too far, you are actually pulling up the highlights as well. Uh, on one tends to do that a lot actually, and I don't like that. But yeah, and if we are starting to blow the whites again, we can simply move down the whites here. Now I want to introduce some more shadows and I want to see what happens if I go down on the midtones or up on the midtones. As you can see, we can control parts of the highlights with the midtone slider as well. And I'm going to go down just a bit there and maybe move up to something like that. And let's reset the whites or drop the whites. And I think around there is a good place. Now I want to go down to the white balance the white balance is fine, but it should have started with the white balance. But let's now move down. And yeah, it went down just a bit. Uh, so it didn't adjust it too much. Uh, this is where we were as shot. And this is where we are at right now. So it went down 100 Kelvin and that's fine. Now I'm going to pop the colors quite a bit. This is how I like to do it. All right, so I think we are good right there. Now I want to add some details, especially in here. And 
with a dynamic contrast uh, module, we are indeed adding details. And is it too much or not? We can see, yeah, this is a softer look and that was the word I was looking for before. Uh, softer look, yeah, that's fine. I'm still not happy. It should be more yellowish tone. We can try and do it with a photo filter. So if I go for the 85 here and go down just a bit, this should warm it up. Yeah, no, I'm not happy about that. So let's leave that. We could even try with a sunset uh, or sunshine filter. And that really warms it up. But yeah, in this case, it's actually pretty good, but I don't want to apply it to the sky. So I'm going to hit the gradient here and simply pull that gradient together just a bit there. And yeah, something like this maybe. That's fine. And I'm going to drop uh, the opacity just a bit to somewhere around there. And then if we want to, we can add a glow filter. I use glow filter all the time. I think it does magic to really creating a softer scene. But don't use a glow filter if there's no sunlight or direct light hitting the source. Uh, and don't overdo it. And I want to maybe go for a tone enhancer. And just go up on the shadows. Uh, the sh sliders inside the tone enhancer aren't affecting the image uh, just as much as the develop or tone module does. So in some cases using a, a tone enhancer is a better choice than to sit inside the develop module and doing adjustments all over the place. And I can even drop the highlights just a bit in the tone enhancer. And I want to move up even more on the shadows. And maybe even some on the exposure. And now I'm flattening the image, so maybe not. And it's just a dance with the sliders there. I'm going to reset this one and reset this one. And I think we are in a good place right now and let's add some clarity just to make it pop because the glow filter softens the image just a bit too much in this case all right so i think that's it for this image uh, all that we need to do is the final tweaks and some proper dodge and burn i would highlight the bright areas and i would uh, darken the more darker areas and I would probably introduce some more temp to the uh, brighter areas so if we just I'm just going to show this quickly and I'm whoops I'm going up on the temp here and I'm just going to brush that in with a larger brush <laughs> and you can see what it does so it really brings out this yellowish tone that we know the sun creates. And two is too much in this case. So we're just going with one and we can use the vibrant slider instead. And this is a part of my dodge and burn. So you want to highlight what's there. Don't try to create something that's not there. If you feel that you are trying to do that all the time, Simply drop the image and move on. Uh, that's my advice. Uh, don't spend too much time trying to find something that's not there. In this case, we have the yellow light source from the sun hitting slightly over here. So we can try and highlight this. And we can even make that part brighter if we want to and uh, move up the shadows as well everything that we feel helps and uh, in this case you can see now we are creating contrast in a good way i would say 
And if I'm not happy about it, I'll try the opacity slider. Maybe that's faster than sitting here and trying to find the perfect place all the time. And in this case, the opacity slider helps me achieve what I want. Just some contrast. So that's it for this video. Uh, it's a bit dark, but I would use the dodge and burn to fix that. And uh, yeah, I hope you like this video. This is my workflow, uh, basically. Yeah, pretty much my workflow. There might be some things I would do differently, but yeah, I don't want to go in too technical because <laughs> that would mean that the video will just stretch out and last forever. And if you like this video, hit that uh, like button. If you want to watch more from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to buy or try on one for draw 2022, hit the link in the description. That's an affiliate link that will give me a cup of coffee. And uh, you will support me if you want to through that link. Again, thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again. Goodbye.